Hello friends and welcome. Today we're gonna to do a little bit of math to figure out when the best time to consume the Gree Gree is. It is the new innate ability item that Witch Doctor gets that generates gold, but you gotta use it at some point and a lot of people have been asking me like when is the best time for that. I'm not gonna to claim to know exactly. The, the patch is out a couple days, guys, but I did do a little bit of math and a little bit of like theory crafting to figure out when I think is best. Uh, so you can agree with me or not. I'd, I'd love to hear it down below in the comments, but let me show you what I got. A couple things you may want to know about this innate ability. It generates one gold every three seconds, which translates to 20 GPM, and it starts right away. So you'll see we're 40 seconds into the game and we've already got a good chunk of gold here. The other component to this item is that when you die, instead of losing the gold, the death cost goes into the Gree Gree. If you don't know what your death cost is, it is net worth divided by 40. If you don't know, you don't want to do that math, totally understandable. Just hover over your gold. You can see it here down to the bottom right, the death cost. I want to point out that you have to actually lose the gold. So you see here, I have unreliable gold. So if I were to die, for example, uh, you teleport into the enemy fountain as you are wont to do in your classic Dota game. You'll see our Gree Gree jumped up in uh, net worth or the the amount of money in there, I don't know what to call it yet, but uh, the bank in the Gree Gree went up by 21 gold, I guess. Now, if we spend all our money on, uh, I don't know, just like a bunch of stuff, uh, you'll see that we no longer have unreliable gold because reliable gold comes from the passive GPM. So if we were to die now and you keep an eye on the amount in the Gree Gree, it's at 83, we die, you don't gain anything in here. And you're not really gaining money, you're just not losing money. So let's not... Uh, like the 20 GPM is what is actually generating gold. The rest of the money is just like, you're not losing that gold, but it's not like you're creating new gold for yourself and your team. Math time. So the Gree Gree is 20 GPM. That translates to 100 gold every five minutes. Nice and easy number to remember until they change it. But here it is laid out for you guys. So by like 10 minutes, you would have generated 230 gold from holding the Gree Gree. For your reference, here is passive GPM. You don't really need to know these numbers, but it does change throughout the game. But somewhere between 90 to 100 gold GPM is pretty common for most Dota games. It's rare to go like later than this, although it actually does keep scaling up. If you don't have the death cost for every single net worth possible because you're a casual player, don't worry. Here you go. Here's a reference to use. So at the start of the game, you're going to lose 15 gold when you have 600 net worth. And then throughout the game, let's say you had like 3000 net worth, you would lose 75 gold. But no longer, it's going to go into the Gree Gree if you're a Witch Doctor. I put some rough time estimates here if you are a position four or position five support. This obviously changes every single game depending how well or how poorly you are doing. But a lot of times I'd say like 2000 net worth around 10 minutes is pretty common, you know, 4000 by 20 minutes. Uh, there's usually like a jump from there because like bigger objectives start to fall, bigger kills, things like that happen. And then once the objectives start clearing out, uh, there tends to be like a slower period, so it sometimes drops off. Well, it's actually not important at all, but the, the net worth to death cost, this is exact, this is an estimate. A couple examples, so let's say you're gonna consume it at 17 minutes, it would have generated 370 gold by then, and let's say you died four times throughout the game, it depends when you die, but just some examples of reasonable death costs for that time frame, something like this, gets you 555 gold. If you wanted to hang on to it later, let's say like 30 minutes, it would have generated you 630 gold. And let's say you died like eight times, then depending when you died, here are some you know possible death costs. And then you would get 1,440 gold from the Gree Gree. So why don't we hold the Gree Gree until it's worth thousands of gold, consume it and just buy ourselves an Aghanim straight up. That'd be great, but we have an issue slot efficiency. So the Gree Gree starts in your neutral item slot and you can move it to the inventory. You can move it back. Don't worry about that. But you can't move it to your backpack. You can't drop it on the ground. Can't give it to your courier. Can't pass it into the stash like you can with most other items. The only thing you can do is consume it. And once it's consumed, you don't get another. At the start of the game, you don't have a neutral item. So the fact that it's in here is perfect. You go like place your starting observers. Boom. Perfect slot efficiency. Now eventually we use like our fairy fire. We use our tangos. Maybe we had a blood grenade. Use that right that's okay because we're gonna start buying other items the laning stage is tough maybe we're buying raindrops you know finish out the wand buy a wind lace and this is all fine because even as a support carrying observers and sentries or maybe we need dust because of invis heroes right we're fine with these six slots but once you get the tier one neutral items we're gonna have some issues because this has to go into one of these slots now so like okay maybe we don't have raindrops right and we put the gree, gree in here so we can have our neutral item in you can probably make a case where the Gree Gree with the GPM and the death cost saving might be worth more than some of the tier one neutrals, but I'd say that's a tough sell. You want the Gree Gree in here so that you can keep your neutral item, the free value you're supposed to be getting. 
but this limits what we can do. So you want to get arcane boots. I'd like to have this Bassy in here. Maybe we don't need dust for whatever reason, right? Sure. But at some point you will run into the issue near the 10 to 20 minute mark, depending on your build, depending how good you are doing. So this is where I think going shard first, if you want to keep the Gree Gree for longer is pretty tempting because it's going to fill up a slot that is not one of your inventory pieces. So you do get to keep like whatever small items you have bought along the way. But at some point you will be buying other things like a glimmer cape and like, what are you gonna swap out, right? So I think it's around this time. Like the first time I'm gonna think about it is at 15 minutes. If I'm having a rough game, I'm gonna try to consume the Gree Gree to buy the shard because that shard was generating me 20 GPM, but if I use the shard to live or to get a kill, suddenly I get like 200, 300 gold. That's way more, right? And Dota is a game that can snowball a lot. So I like jumping this shard timing up by a few minutes, let's say like 15 minutes. That was, we said like 300 plus gold. So that would have taken you like one, two, three minutes to get normally without the Gree Gree. So I think being able to buy the shard that much sooner, you get like two, three uses out of this, maybe get three kills. That's like 600 gold for yourself now, right? Or maybe you're having a good game, you can afford the shard, great, get the shard, hang on to the Gree Gree, use it to finish like a Glimmer Cape a few minutes faster, and that will keep you alive from an enemy storm spirit trying to kill you, or it'll let you channel your ultimate for the entire duration because they can't see you because you're glimmered, right? And those moments where you have a finished key item, I think they'll have more impact, generate more value for you and your team than the GPM you get from Gree Gree, which I know if you keep it, it does keep going up and like, oh, it keeps adding death cost. But if you think about like what you would trade, again, we said like tier ones, maybe it's worth it, but like tier two neutrals, like compare it to dragon scale, five armor, five HP regen, the ring of health is 700 gold, 4.5 regen, chain mail is 550 gold, right? So that's like 1200 gold that is in this slot, not even including afterburn passive, right? This is 200 or 20 GPM. So that's 200 gold in 10 minutes. It's just like, it just doesn't compare to the value of neutral items in my opinion. And if you are dying so much, the death cost, you're like, Zach, I'm saving thousands of gold here. You're dying way too much. You have a separate issue that the Gree Gree cannot solve for you. So, I think the practical value of Gree Gree really starts to drop off once you are starting to fill up slots and looking for your first major purchase, whether that's Shard, Four Staff, Glimmer, like one of those items, like Gree Gree is starting to lose its value compared to those alternatives. And so that's why I think somewhere between 10, 20 minutes, that sounds perfect for consuming the Gree Gree. For those of you wondering, I think the Headhunter facet is his best one right now. And the data shows like he's has a positive win rate with this one. It used to scale by, I think like 10, 15, 20, 25 per level. And now it's 35 every level. So I think that's really good for damaging enemy heroes. If you can get lucky with the cask bounces or farming creep waves, jungle camps to speed up your item timings. I think this one is the best. Voodoo Festeration, I think for like an offlane Witch Doctor maybe, but the numbers don't really feel like they're there, uh, but more exploration is needed, but the win rate's bad right now. And then so is Clef Death, though it's much closer to 50-50 than uh, like Voodoo Festeration is, but it's still negative uh, by a little bit. But I think if you really want like a late game ult, maybe this is good, but I'd rather just have a stronger early game, speed up like an Ags timing, stuff like that, and uh, go from there. Here's a rough guide if you want to try Witch Doctor for the first time. This is what I think is a decent build for the current patch, but obviously lots of exploration to be had. I think with that left facet, you want to max Paralyzing Cask. If you want to go 102 by level 3, that's fine. You'll see a lot of high-level players do that. But I kind of exploring like the Cask being better now. Um, so whatever. If you want to max Cask first, I think that's good. You might still see people max Maledict. That is technically the most damage, but I think this will give the most farming speed for... Uh, pubs if you're not getting kills off Maldic. So I'm going to try it out and then uh, take your ult whenever you can. If you need a point in Voodoo Restoration, you can take it earlier. I'm not sure yet. 200 health is really nice if you're having trouble staying alive. This is a new talent. Um, people are exploring it. I don't know if it'll end up being better than Voodoo Restoration. If you decide you want Voodoo Restoration, you need at least one point in Voodoo before you're going to take this talent. I think with one point, 
is kind of worth taking, but you can wait till you have like two, three, four, and then take the talent. And I, I don't think it's like a massive deal. The issue is, is like, if you take too many points in Voodoo Restoration, it becomes really expensive to use. And it's better to be able to use a weaker vo version of Voodoo Restoration for longer because you have like one point and the talent versus a better version of Voodoo Restoration, but you can't use it as long because you don't have the mana. So that's usually why you see this talent t taken uh, pretty early if you are going to go for uh for it for items you just kind of like right click poke in the lane wait for a good combo of maldict cask you can harass with maldict uh to start but eventually you're just kind of like looking for the full in combo to get the kill you're gonna get your arcane boots mana restoration for everything and you do need a lot of mana regen for later when you are going to use voodoo restoration and then the shard i think is really good anything that helps you get your death ward channel off so like uh, glimmer cape ghost scepter classic support items of course positioning things to help you move around and then like scaling items and if you want to be more of a team player there are witch doctors who go like spirit vessel combo that with maledict it's a lot of damage or like you're just backing someone up it's less about you then you can buy like solar crest or whatever auras things like that you know classic support stuff you guys know so that's all i got let me know if you agree agree or disagree agree please don't leave because obviously there's still a lot to figure out with this patch so let me know what you have tried down in the comments i'd love to hear it thank you for watching see you in another video